Well, are you going to go in or not? Fine. Text me. Have you been? Good. Good. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> so, still at ballet school? Uh, I, I left a few years ago. Oh, I see. How time flies. <laughs> Feels like only yesterday you were just a little girl. I was resting till four o'clock, but... Well... Feel free to look around. Must have been years since you were last here. I know it has been for me. I'll be by the wine fridge if you need me. Hi, Dad. Vanessa. Oh, it's so good to see you. Look how big you've gotten. And how, how dark your hair is now. But still so pretty. How are things? You're being looked after well. Good. good, that's good. How's the ballet? Actually, I gave up ballet. I'm going to university to study biology. Oh, I see. What? Biology? You're gonna fix me up? Vanessa, I, I just wanted to... I know I haven't been there for you since... Well, I can't say how sorry. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. 
Why don't you stay the night? I don't think so. I should probably get back. I have lots of work. <laughs> don't stress. Just, just consider it. It would mean a lot to him. He's been talking about you an awful lot these last few days, you know. Makes a change. All he ever used to talk about was his work. Oh, Mum. <laughs> well, he certainly has a habit of saying the wrong things at the wrong time. He's got our father to blame for that. Have you been here long? Oh, only a few days. Do you know I was in LA when he asked me to come? Sure, he did it on purpose. Even when we were kids, I used to have to say no to going out when he was ill. Never thought I'd still be babysitting him into my fifties. Take it he hasn't learned his lesson then. Oh, honey, this isn't for him. He stopped years ago. How long does he have left? Who knows? He refuses to be seen by a doctor. But if I had to guess, it seems like his nine lives are up. Such a shame. You should hear him out. He might be a bit more open on the things he used to find too painful to talk about. I think I'll become liquid if I eat any more bloody soup. At least try to have some. I wouldn't be able to taste it if I did. Nobody made soup quite like your mother. She and Janet used to be so competitive. Always at each other's necks trying to make the best blinking soup. <coughs> Dad. There's something I need to know. And I'd like you to be honest. Did you drink as much as you did because of me. Because she died having me. It's not that simple. How is it not that simple? Why else would you dig yourself into a hole this deep? I always thought that I'd be the last person to be like this. But addiction leaves you in a dark place. And all it takes is one moment of weakness for it to take over. I couldn't resist the idea that I could numb the pain. But however drunk I was, the pain was always there. And it got so bad that the only way not to feel pure misery was to feel nothing at all. I was so stupid to think that anything less than a miracle could fill the void that was left when I lost her. And now that it's too late, I realized that the miracle was right in front of my eyes. You mustn't ever blame yourself for what happened. Not to even if there's nothing left to blame. It's what I did. Look what happened to me. But if you don't blame me for what happened, then why did you make me go? You think I was in any position to look after you? Perhaps I could barely look at you without, without reminding myself how much I'd failed you. And her. Why did you never tell me any of this? Us men aren't great at talking about our feelings. 
We prefer staying quiet and telling people we're fine, even if it means we harm ourselves or the people we love. Janet told me that you got better. I certainly couldn't get any worse. <laughs> Life's too short not to laugh. Remember that. Well, thanks for the advice, but I don't think you're in any position to give me life lessons. <laughs> poem I used to read you. The one about the caterpillars? Ah, that's the one. I used to love hearing that as a kid. I never found it after you left. I would have loved to read it one last time. Hold on. Wait there. Hmm. used to read it to me. <laughs> How times change. All right, Dad. In the days and years that pass, thousands of caterpillars live in the grass, living peacefully, so carefree, they stick together as families, but once in their lives, they do something curious. The change is abrupt and rather mysterious. One curls up tight, and before soon, they're wrapped up in a silk cocoon. The family sobs and says their goodbyes. Even the toughest of caterpillars cry. And then something happens. The strangest of things. Out pops a butterfly with beautiful wings. But they can't stay with them down on the ground. The whole of the world just waiting to be found. They tell their families there's no need to cry. <laughs> They'll always be watching from up in the sky. <laughs> when they've passed and the pain has gone, they can sleep peacefully, knowing that their soul has lived on. <laughs> they revel in living as life is no race knowing that they'll meet again in the better place.